Good afternoon and hello, everyone. Welcome back to our latest episode of Musical Musings. We air this program every Wednesday at 1 p.m. and it's broadcast from Rachamakan University of Technology, Pranakan. We're going to bring this program to you in two parts. For the first part, we're going to talk about the singer or the band that performs the song, and we'll also discuss the song a little bit, talk about basically just what it's about. What is the song about? We're then going to listen to the song. And when we come back to the program for the second part, we will go through the lyrics of the song to look at anything that might be difficult to understand, any difficult words, the slang, vocabulary, or any difficult sayings, anything in there that could be difficult to understand. We'll then have the news and the latest updates from the university as usual. Musical Musings Musical Musings Musical Musings Musical Musings Welcome everyone, this is Gary Gray. I am your host for the Musical Musings program. I'm an English teacher here at Rachamakan University of Technology, Pranakan, And I come from the United States of America. I have been here teaching at the university for about seven years. And so for today's song, we are going to do the song Time in a Bottle by Jim Croce. All right, so let's talk about Jim Croce first. Okay, first off, I always encourage at the end of the, at the, end of the program for folks to listen to more of the music by these performers, uh, this performer, Jim Croce. His last name might be a little difficult to spell given how it is pronounced, even though it's a nice short name, Croce. That C sounds like a C-H, Croce. Ch- sounds like a C-H. There is no C-H there. His last name is spelled C-R-O-C-E. C-R-O-C-E. Jim Croce. Okay, so Mr. Croce, he was born in 1943 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. That's in the United States of America. Um, that is on the East Coast, in case you don't know where Philadelphia is. That's a little bit south of New York City and a little bit north of Washington, D.C. On the East Coast of the United States, we have a bunch of big cities in the northern part. We have, if you go from north to south, we have Boston. Um, maybe Providence, that's not so big, uh, but that's the next state down. They have a pretty big city. Uh, then we have New York City, then Philadelphia, then Baltimore, maybe. Again, not quite so big, but that's right there along the way. Then Washington, D.C. So those are the big cities along the in the northern and eastern part of the U.S., right along the coast there. I say right along the coast. Some of them aren't right on the coast. Philly's a little bit inland. D.C.'s a little bit inland. But basically that stretch. And I just mentioned that because last week we did uh, Harry Chapin, who was from New York. And there's a lot of singers and actors and actresses that come from New York. So Philly is not far away. So it's kind of in that same area. So there's quite a few performers that also come from Philadelphia, um, just as there are a lot that come from Boston. There's a lot from that whole kind of area of the northeastern part of the U.S. And Jim Croce is from Philadelphia. He was only active from 1966 to 1973 as a really popular professional singer. Unfortunately, as we've seen with a lot of our performers, that is because he died young once again. So Jim Croce, unfortunately, died in Louisiana, which is in the southern part of the United States. In 1973, he died in a plane crash when the plane was taking off. You may wonder, my God, why do all of these singers end up dying in plane crashes and car accidents and things like that? Yeah, it's just, it's just something that happens when you're, when you're in a business like this. I mean, they're traveling a lot. So you're always on planes, and they're usually taking small planes so that they can take their own plane. 
Plus, they need room to put all their equipment and things like that. Sometimes that'll go on a bus and they'll fly on a plane. But if they're going to put it on a plane, they really need a private plane because you're not going to put all of that equipment onto a commercial plane with other passengers and everything. And private planes tend to be uh, more risky. They don't go through all the same safety checks as like a plane from an airline like uh, United Airlines or even even some of the lower cost ones like Thai Lion or Air Asia. They're still safer than private planes. Um, so, you know, these things just kind of happen. It's really sad, but it's something that happens within the music industry. We've had a lot of singers um, that have sadly gotten killed, especially in plane crashes. Although last week when we talked about Harry Chapin, his was in a car crash. But he was still, it was still the same thing. He was on his way to a performance. He was going to perform. So the travel was still related to his music career. So these folks travel a lot. And when you travel a lot, things can happen. Okay, so sadly, he passed away in 1973. That's why his career ended so soon. So he was only active for about seven years, from 1966 to 1973. He still had a lot of good songs, though. His most famous one is going to be our song for today. It's going to be Time in a Bottle. Uh, But he had a bunch of other really big songs. Uh, Bad, Bad Leroy Brown was also very popular. Operator was was a big song. Don't Mess Around with Jim was a big song. I've Got a Name. I'll have to say I love you in a song. Lots of big songs. Um, My favorite um, is probably Time in a Bottle, but I kind of have a soft spot also for Bad, Bad Leroy Brown because it was my grandfather's favorite song. My grandfather loved that song. And even though uh, Jim Croce is a singer from quite a long time ago, 1966 to 1973, I am actually kind of old myself, so my grandfather is really old. Actually, he he has died since then, but my point is he was pretty old then. So this wasn't the type of music you would expect my grandfather to like, Um, but he did. So it was kind of fun that my grandfather liked that song, and it was his favorite song. Okay, so as far as what type of music Jim Croce sings, uh, the genre here is mostly folk music. Uh, we talked about that again last week with Harry Chapin, with him being mostly folk. But with Jim Croce, he does mix a little more rock in there. Not much. Not much. He's still primarily folk, a folk singer. But there's definitely a little more rock music element in there. Maybe even a little bit of pop. Like Operator is kind of folk pop music. Um, but Bad Bad Leroy Brown, You Don't Mess Around With Jim, those are kind of folk and rock mixed together. So there's some crossover there between different genres. But if you had to put one genre on Jim Croce, it would be folk singer. Okay, so let's get to the song here. So the song we're doing is Time in a Bottle. All right, so what that saying means about saving time, it's about saving time in a bottle. Um, The name of the song is just Time in a Bottle, but it's referring to saving time in a bottle. Obviously, you can't save time in a bottle, and that's what the song is about. It says, if I could save time in a bottle. So what it's about is saving your memories. In particularly, it's talking about saving a memory, saving memories with a person. So we're probably talking about someone that he loves. In fact, he wrote this song shortly after he found out that his wife was pregnant. So it's probably like a love song to his wife. Um... Uh, Although he never really explained that, so maybe it is, maybe it's not, but probably that's what it is. So he's talking about saving memories with someone so that you never forget, so that you remember the best times. And like I said, this was written during like one of the best times of his life. He just found out he was going to be a father, his wife was pregnant, um, and so he wrote the song right after that. So he was pretty happy. Um, And it was released in 1972, so this was towards the end of his career and the end of his life. Again, he died in 1973, so this song came out in 1972. All right, so you may notice that we've talked a lot about Jim Croce and his different songs and things like that here in the first part of our program. That's because this is a pretty short song. This is not that long of a song. There's not too much of a chorus here. Uh, it, It does repeat some of the lines. Um, then there is a little bit of a chorus, 
uh, but not in the normal way you hear it in some songs. So without a chorus, it does stretch the stretch the lyrics out because we change lyrics more often because we don't have a part that really repeats a lot. So we do get a little bit more, a little bit. The lyrics do stretch out a little bit because of that. But it's a reasonably short, simple song. And it doesn't have a lot of extra meaning. Some of these songs have some weird meanings that we have to explain. Again, again, I'm going to go back to last week's episode where we talked about Harry Chapin. The song really had a lot of meaning there about um, perspective and being happy with your life. This just means what it says. If I could save time in a bottle, first thing that I'd like to do is to spend every moment, is to save every moment with you. So that's what this song is about. It's about exactly what it says. All right, so let's get to that song. Again, for those of you that join us via YouTube, same as every week, because of copyright reasons, we cannot embed the video. So we're going to give you a link here in the upper right corner. Please click on that link. That'll take you to the song. Once the song's completed, you can just click back here for the rest of the program. And for anyone else that's listening to this program, you should be able to listen just fine. It'll The song will just play right through our program like normal. Okay, let's get to the song. Musical musings, musical musings, musical musings, musical musings. Welcome back. All right, so that was Time in a Bottle by Jim Croce. It is a song about remembering people, saving your memories, not forgetting the best of times. Okay, so let's get right to the lyrics here. If I could save time in a bottle, the first thing that I'd like to do is to save every day till eternity passes away, just to spend it with you. Okay, so, again, this is a pretty simple song. It means what it says. So mostly what we're going to have to talk about here, as far as any difficult difficult things to understand, is it might be some of the vocabulary. For example, here it says, until eternity passes away. What does that mean? Eternity means forever. So this says until eternity passes away. Well, it's never going to pass away because it means forever. And so the point there is like forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. So he wants to save every day with this person in a bottle and save it for as long as the earth survives forever. Okay, and he wants to spend it with this person, says just to spend it with you. If I could make days last forever, and if words could make wishes come true, we'd walk through the fields of ripening corn, and time would flow through us and you. Okay, so what does that mean? Okay, so if I could make days last forever, and words could make wishes come true. Okay, if I could make days last forever. All right, so we're talking about lasting forever again. Words could make wishes come true. Again, simple enough to understand. In other words, if he could just say it and make it happen because he wants to be there forever. Walk through the fields of ripening corn. What does that mean? Okay, that doesn't really mean too much except that in America there's kind of this thing about walking through corn with someone you love. It's, I, I think people don't really think of it that way anymore. But back when this song was written, maybe a little bit more, um, before, like, we had a lot of TV programs and Internet and things like that, so people had a lot more spare time. Like, one of the things you might do is go for a walk. And walking through cornfields was kind of a neat thing to do because the corn grows so high it was really private. So you walk through the cornfield with your girlfriend or your boyfriend, and maybe you could even kiss each other. You're out there outside where you're not supposed to be doing that sort of thing. But it's private because the corn is so high. So it was kind of exciting, fun, romantic thing to do with your boyfriend or girlfriend. And it said, and time would fl flow through us and you. So in other words, they just it just means that they're, they'd almost lose track of time. The time would flow through us. It just flows and flows they lo because they're just spending so much time together. They're always together. Okay, we continue on. And I'd save every day like a treasure, and then again I would spend them with you. Okay, I should have probably included that with the rest of that. It's part of that same song. It's part of that same verse there. So I'd save every day like a treasure, 
Okay, when we say like something, like a treasure, that's um, that's a way to compare it to something. Um, and w- what that is is that when you use like, sometimes you do it with and with like, sometimes you do it without like. Uh, this is going to be a simile because we used like. Uh, so that's what that's called. But all it's saying is that the day is a treasure. That's all. It's like a tre- it's like a treasure means it's very valuable, like a treasure. So the day is very valuable. Every time, every minute he spends with this person, which is probably her because Jim Croce is singing it, him, and he's probably talking about his wife as we talked about before. So every day that he spends it with her is valuable. Okay, and then we get to the only thing that is kind of like a chorus in here, but um, because it does repeat again at the end, but it's not much of a chorus. It only repeats once. Okay, it says, And I looked around enough to know you're the one I want to go through time with. Okay. And that's pretty much it. It's just a couple of lines. Uh, And again, pretty easy to understand. I've looked around enough to know. So what it means, it, it doesn't mean he's physically looking around. It means he's experienced enough. He's seen enough of the world. That's what it means where it says look around. He's seen enough of the world, known enough people, seen how much trouble people have in their relationships, whatever, and how good theirs is, that he knows that she's the one that he wants to stay with the rest of his life, go through time with. So she's the one he wants to live the rest of his life with. So this is really a love song. It's a really sweet kind of song. Okay. Now we get to, I guess, the next verse. That wasn't really, a like I said, it's not really verse, chorus, verse, chorus, because that's not much of a chorus there. But I guess we get to the next verse here. If I had a box just for wishes and dreams that had never come true, the box would be empty except for the memory of how they were answered by you. Okay, so what does this mean? If I had a box just for wishes and dreams that had never come true, the box would be empty except for the memory of how they were answered by you. So in other words, if he had a box for wishes and dreams that had never come true. So it says it would be empty. So in other words, all of his wishes and dreams have come true because he's with her. But he does wish that the memories were in there and how they were an- and how his wishes and dreams were answered by by her. So in other words, he wants to remember all of the reasons why they got together, like how she fulfilled his dreams, how did that happen, all of that. So so that's the only thing that should be in the box. Because all of his wishes and dreams have already come true, but he but he do, except for the wish that he doesn't want to forget any of those. So that wish should still be in the box. Because again, the box is for wishes and dreams that have never come true. So again, he's this is the same thing about saving time in a bottle. He wishes the time could be saved. He wishes those memories could be saved like that. Okay, so then we continue on. So if I could save time in a bottle, the first thing that I'd like to do is to save every day till eternity passes away just to spend them with you. Okay, so that actually is a repeat, but it's not really the chorus because that's going back to the beginning of the song. That's kind of like repeating part of the first verse. So again, there's nothing new there. Again, we're talking about eternity. Again, that means forever. And then we continue on. And I'd save every day like a treasure, and then again I would spend them with you. So we've kind of combined those two. We've had that before. We had that earlier before. Remember, that was the kind of the end of the first verse. So they've kind of put those together. And then we repeat that sort of small, short little chorus there. I've looked around enough to know that you're the one I want to go through time with. <laughs> and that's basically the end of the song. It repeats through time with a couple of times, and the song ends. So that's it. Like I told you in the first part, it's a pretty short song, and it's basically a love song for his wife. It sounds a little sad, the way it's sung, and the fact that he's hoping for something that's not there, because, you know, you can't save time in a bottle, right? So the memories, they kind of are in the past now, because you can't save the time. And so it's a little sad, because you know those things are past. And he does wish he could save them in a box. And he's saying that's the one thing that would be in his box. But mostly it's a happy song. Because he's with the person he loves. 
It's a love song for his wife. He's just saying that the one bad thing is that he wishes he could save all the mi- all the memories, save all the time, save it all in a bottle so it doesn't go away. Basically, so those memories will never fade. You never forget anything. You never forget your love or why they're together. Like like when it had the line, how they were answered by you, like how she fulfilled his dreams. So that's that's really all it, all it is there. Okay, so that's really it for this song. Uh, now, one thing I'll point out, uh, we did Harry Chapin last week, and he is one of the best songwriters. So you'll notice that this is a pretty good um, storytelling song as well. It's much shorter than the song we did last week with Harry Chapin, but it's still a pretty sweet little story, right, about him and his uh, him and his wife, probably. We don't get a lot of story details here. It's not so much of a story as the song we had last week from Harry Chapin, but it is still sort of like that. Um, it's still sort of like that. It's a very well-written song. And so Jim Croce is right up there with Harry Chapin as far as uh, being one of the best songwriters. Uh, Croce probably had more hit songs, while Chapin had more songs overall. So which one is better? Hmm, Chapin or... Croce. That's hard to say. I don't know. I, I I probably prefer Chapin because as far as the storytelling, he's probably a little better as we see between these two songs. Croce is musically probably a little bit better, but I really like good, good lyrics. So the storytelling by Chapin probably makes him a, a little bit more my favorite between the two. But Jim Croce is really great, too. In fact, he, he had, like I said, he had more hit songs, uh, really some great ones, Time in a Bottle, Operator, You Don't Mess Around with Jim, Bad, Bad Leroy Brown, and lots more, really. He just, I mean, for someone that was only active for seven years, he had a lot of really good hits, really good hits. So, uh, so Jim Croce was really great singer-songwriter as well. But they are both great. And you should check out both of them, for more of their music. But today we're doing Jim Croce. So go check out Jim Croce's music. And again, his last name is spelled C-R-O-C-E. Uh, even though it's pronounced Croce, Croce, it's C-R-O-C-E. So go check out his music. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Musical Musings. Now, please stay with us and make sure you tune back in next week when I will bring you another great song. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you. Musical, musings, musical.